In this episode of Cassia's Tiles, we wake up in the most beautiful anchorage, navigate our way through some very shallow waters, run into a fishing trap, narrowly avoid an underwater rock, and get approached by immigration. Finally, we found an anchorage that we absolutely adored. Mkia Wan Gombe is the official name of the area, but we affectionately refer to it as Craig's Creek, after our sailing friend Craig, who recommended it to us. Morning, beautiful morning here in Kremba. We're surrounded with mangroves on all sides. So very, it's like a small Bay, small pond actually. Mm. Just a surreal experience of being anchored, anchored right in the middle of the jungle. We loved it. It's had such a good night here. There's a village just uh, behind the trees, I think. This way. That side, <laughs> yeah. So we heard, we sm you can smell the wood fire and you can hear the chickens, the cows mooing, you can hear the kids laughing. Plan of attack for today is to start heading south to another anchorage, but instead of going out through the gap and in the sea, we think we're gonna try and go through the middle of the island through all the estuaries and the channels it's very shallow yesterday we saw there's a lot of reef and sandbars exposed on low tide but we are now just after high tide so fingers crossed and exercising some good judgment let's do it hey nerds shall we hit the road let's go okay let's go sailing Doing this blind, team. Eh? Right. I'm just trying to find deeper water. Uh huh. I'm, I'm feeling my way through it, so I can't follow the Navionics and the chart plotter um, because all the all the sand and everything's been shifting. So I'm pretty much just trying to go through a channel, and I'm trying to make my own course by looking for deeper water. We're also told the GPS is a little bit off here in this place. Possibly the GPS is off. Yeah, I would I'd agree, but I would put it down to strong currents run in and out with the tidal streams and it's shifting sand and everything all around the place so these these banks that we're going through they're shifting we soon noticed a shimmering path on the water we assumed that was where the current was the strongest we followed the path and our guess was correct this was the deepest part of the channel likely because the current washes the sand away from the bottom blue represents Shallow, shallow water. So we're about to cross over it now. So you're trying to say that wasn't the worst of it that yet? That wasn't the worst of it at all. We're about to go through the worst of it. Let's hope it's not the worst of it, for God's sake. Let's just make sure it's, it's fine. It's nine meters at the moment. Oh. We're through the first lot of shallow water. Gonna run in the deeper water for a little bit until we get to the next nail biting section of our track. And in the meantime, the tide is dropping and dropping and dropping. Fingers crossed, toes crossed, everything crossed, and we can continue through the center of the island. So we're going through Pemba. Okay, we just discovered we had an infestation of insects that has gone through our flower, rice, and pup. So we lost all our white rice. Luckily the flower we could still manage. It's just little black bugs and they started biting through everything literally. They bite through the plastic bags. So just a plastic, sealed plastic bag is not enough. Hence my obsession with tap-away containers because the only starch that survived after this infestation that was stored in plastic containers. You just don't know where they come from. But they do a lot of damage. We were so busy dealing with the weevils we took our eyes off the controls, which was a bad idea given the waters we were navigating. Just as we got into the deeper water, we had another problem on our hands. We discovered we were towing a bit of debris behind us. It's been cut. 
We've got this ice top. Jeez. Sick of this plant. Sunshine back in. Another boy? No, it's all over, boy. This is the problem we get. That's the problem we get. Yeah, there's lots of um, lots of fishing nets and fishing traps. And this is what the local fishermen use to mark their nets. You can't see it. We decided to make an unplanned stop to dive the prop and make sure nothing was wrapped around it. We headed for a nearby anchorage recommended by our East Africa pilot book and ran into another issue. There were uncharted rocks and coral heads everywhere. More to the port. Yeah, I've got three meters to the rock. You clear? You can start swimming. Look how close it is! Look at that boat, they're just coming. I hope the line doesn't wrap around anymore. I'm just going to do an unscheduled stop because we just ran through a fishing trap as you just saw. Um, and I'm just going to dive the prop because hopefully nothing's twisted in there or wrapped in it. So we've just anchored in this very shallow spot here. It's not supposed to be an anchorage here. And nearly smashed into a goddamn bombing, which you've actually just noticed as well. I'm actually going to swim over and look at that bombing after I've cleaned the prop. Hopefully there's nothing in that prop, so good luck to me. And it's cold water, by the way. And salty. And, and salty. Wet. Very salty and wet. We don't like any of that. <laughs> <laughs> Get in, Cap. All clear, nothing wrapped. Well, this unplanned stop turned out to be quite pleasant. A few more miles of fast sailing and we were at our old anchorage, this time making sure we stopped far away from shore. Oh, we made it. That was exhausting. Challenges were uh, bombies that we did not realize. There were sandbars. There was reef and with very tight little passages to sort of tack through. But we did it. Great day. So we're done with Pemba. Tonight's our last anchorage and we've set the hook. It's all good. And tomorrow morning we'll hopefully head back to Zanzibar. The following morning we had a slight change of plan. We decided to make a quick detour and stop at Pemba's island main town, Mkwani Harbour. No sooner we set foot on shore, we got greeted by a local guide who volunteered to show us the way to town. That's right, we're still in Pemba, we still haven't left. We can't leave this place. We're making one last stop though at Mkwani Haba. We just pulled in quickly, grabbed some groceries, bits and pieces, supplies, and promise we're off to Zanzibar tomorrow morning. All right. <laughs> we keep saying that every day. But we do have uh, our guide, Chris, who's helping us today. It's old Mo again. Yeah. Hello, Mo. <laughs> Are we ready? Yeah. I'm ready. Next to the ferry terminal, we ran into an unexpected challenge. Um, two young guys running up in their little high-vis outfit says immigration. I want to see your passport. So I said, well, it's on the boat. You have to come tomorrow and see it. We'll come today. No, uh, let me make a phone call. Oh my God, when I saw the immigration on his vest, I'm like, here we go. All the bad things we heard about Pemba. Cut long story short, we've got copies of the passport on our phones. We just showed it to them. To them that was enough even though there's no not a stamp page it's just our passport so let's go so it was pretty clear it was good overall there wasn't a great deal to see in this town so after picking up some supplies we headed back to our dinghy to set sail for zanzibar we're all done here we didn't have to actually drive around the place we could just walk straight through the beach straight to the shops it's right here so we've driven around town we picked up our tomatoes We've picked up Coca-Cola, we've picked up all the bits and pieces, back to Cassis and definitely, definitely, definitely going to Zanzibar tomorrow.